Hello YouTube and welcome back with another video on the Tool Teardown channel. Sorry for the lighting which is slightly different than normal because I'm filming this in the evening so I had to put on some extra light so if there's a bit of a weird shadow and a weird blue light it's because of the bright LEDs that I'm using to light up the space a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. In today's video the Einhell T ERS 18 lithium power exchange cordless rotating sander as it's called in all its glory battery operated for uh, extra flexibility if you're already using the Einhal power exchange battery system uh, works with any of them so any big ones small ones you can plug them in and um, off you go on off button on the front Variable speed limit. The dust that just came out isn't part of the delivery when you get yours. That's after you use it for a couple of months. I think that was a bit of drywall dust coming out there from the most recent activity. The battery isn't included with the purchase if you buy the solo device. Uh, they do listings on Amazon with a 4 amp battery for just over £100. The solo device, as it would stand like this, with the dust extractor catch bag, whatever you call it, and one disc of, in your case it'll be new, but it's used sandpaper, 80 grid. That's part of the delivery um, when you take it out of the box. So the, the dust extractor bag, pouch, whatever, so you can just uh, knock the dirt out when it's full and then reuse it. Works so-so. These things work best with a vacuum cleaner attached, which is why this thing is there. So you can put your vacuum hose on there. Uh, it also comes off completely if you don't like it at all. Oh dear, I just realized that, that that's actually broken, the one that I got there. One of the pegs is sort of broken off so that that'll come off you probably need a screwdriver to do so oops there we go so that's uh, the end piece there and then this is your actual bare sander unit and like I said the uh, the little clip here is snapped so I don't know if I might have dropped it or it got damaged in the box I don't know so this is what's known as an eccentric sander so the sanding disc is like a random orbital sander so when I turn it on in its lowest speed um, and I do it upside down you can see that you know you can um, hot it's um, moving sort of in a slightly oval pattern so it's not a round pattern which helps you with finishing your surfaces smooth and evenly unlike if you've got for instance a normal sander like this one is uh, oh dear. Um, also dirty and dusty but um, yeah, this is just a sander that just vibrates, whereas this one um, moves into uh, random orbital movements, similar to some of the car polishing uh, machines out there. It's a nice, quite powerful machine. Uh, it's a bit powerful at times for some of the applications that you might use this for. So you have to almost hold it with two hands. Um, you can hold it like this, but she tends to dig in a little bit and, and you know, you topple a little bit. There's some reviews out there that show it. Um, so that might be a, a concern for you. There are versions that are a bit flatter and have the battery system like like so and the whole build of it is a bit flatter which has advantages and disadvantages again um because if it's that long you tend to it tends to topple by itself so you have to constantly hold it but 
Um, so yeah, there, there is there is that um, advantage disadvantage. Uh, the sanding disc itself it, it can take the universal um, multi hole pads sanding pads. So for dust extraction, these are universal. So I'll pick them up. 125 millimeter in diameter. The standard off the shelf Velcro type discs or sanding pads to go onto this device. So it works with all the common brands out there. The standard piece of paper that comes with it, 80 grid, is of a medium quality at best. So yeah, you're probably best off when you commit to purchasing one of these to get a separate set of sanding discs with it. They last a pretty good time because of the random orbital movement, but without dust extraction, as you can see in this pad, for instance, you get these spots where it clogs up um, and then it renders the, the pad pretty useless pretty quickly. A recommendation is use the dust extraction with this device. You could argue what's the point of having a cordless then, but for the odd quick bits here and there, having this, plug a battery in it, off you go, especially when you're working outside, it's quite handy to have it cordless as such. But anyway, let's get into the details. I use this for six months now. This is an on-off switch, which says zero and one on here, but because of the, I've used this device, as you can see, uh, it's become unreadable, so you, you obviously it doesn't really matter what it says on it, you just press it and you press it again. Um, so this is the on, this is the off side. Um, but yeah, when we take it apart before I assemble it, I'll clean out this bit so I can read the, 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 the button again. Um, and then your speed dial up here, so when you hold it up on here, you can use your thumb to control the speed and the on off button obviously with your index fingers or whatever to turn it on and off. The other point of mentioning is that the speed control, unless you have it fully, as you could just hear it, when you click it into six or max, this thing doesn't go to 11, this goes to six. You can hear it sort of clicking in place only one way though, so when you turn it the other way, it stops. It's fully variable, so you can dial up the dial, as I can show you now. Fully variable. It is easy, handy, it's where you want it, almost. One hand operation. But sometimes when you're holding it and you're just moving it around, by accident you flick the switch or you turn the dial, as you like, and it changes RPM on you. Good thing that you can still see the battery indications and when you're doing big jobs, you, you still can read the uh, and reach the, the battery indication there. There's enough space there for, well, some people with bigger fingers might struggle, but you can, you can reach it still, you know, which is a good thing. Nice little rubber bumper. Got the direction, the rotational direction on there as well, on both sides, there and there. Um, so when you work towards edges, you don't really damage them. Although having said that, if the sandpaper isn't 100% square on, you end up, the sandpaper falls over the edge and you end up using that to damage the object. So be mindful when you hit or when you get close to an edge. That's it pretty much. So I thought, um, let's take it apart and have a look inside. Selection of Phillips screws holding this device together. So I'm gonna speed this process up a little bit. There we go. All the fasteners are of the same length, which is good. Oh, there's always one that stays behind. Okay. Wasn't quite loose. The other good thing about this device is that you can, when, once you've worn this out, um, you can just exchange the pad by undoing the four screws that hold it on, and you can get spare parts on the website and just swap it out. Your little stubby screws there and uh, hold that on nice and simple oops and the last one's sort of stuck in the pad and then the pad which is just uh, uh, a rubberized pad 
So it's got a, um, a plastic base, which is then rubberized, so the black stuff that you see, which has gone a bit dusty around there. Um, and then it's layered with Velcro. Uh, so this is made in a mold plastic uh, piece. The Velcro piece gets inserted into a mold. The rubber TPE over mold, uh, molding gets injected into it and it all becomes one and the same part. So it's nice and stiff. There's a little bit of flex to it. I'm trying to read it, but yeah, it says TP, TPU. So this is a, a, a rubberized over molding instead of the TPE that you can find on the handles and stuff, which is probably also what this is. Uh, so it's a TPU, which I guess is also what this is made of, but there is no markings on that part. Again, so you could swap this out if you ever wanted to replace it um, once it's worn out. So that just peels away by pulling the little pegs out the plastic body. There you go. So that's that piece. So I'll give it a proper clean when we put it back together. As one of the viewers commented the other day on the Makita video that I just thrown it back together. Um, you're right. I was so focused on getting the video ready that I uh, completely got uh, distracted by um, lubing it up and cleaning it out. Right, let's see if we can peel the two halves apart to see what's inside this baby. So this is not a brushless device. This is a brushed uh, sander. I'm sure they'll come with a brushless version at some point in the future. There we are. So that's what it looks like on the inside. Your variable speed control there, your on off switch, very simple, and your brushed motor. Um, and then the uh, the big cooling fan, uh, which acts uh, both for cooling the motor, but also dust extraction, which it's why it's um, formed as it is with blades on both sides. So it actually helps blowing the dust into this port, which helps getting most of the dust away from the actual sanding disc which lives under here um, and you can see the the ports for the dust extraction go straight through and into this fan area battery terminal out that's nice and snug in there there we go so one half of the clam <coughs> nice and dusty you can see quite big there the isc logos in there so this is a uh, a device fully engineered in-house by Einheld themselves, so it's not an off-the-shelf that they stick a sticker on it. So this is actually uh, interesting. This is not made out of um, um, the tool plastic that we traditionally see in a lot of tools. This is made from PP with a 30% glass fiber reinforcement. There's no mentioning of the actual overmolding on this uh, device. As you can see, it's quite thin in places. There are some through mouldings, as you can see, um, where the little um, rubber bits there come through the red plastic um, there as well. But yeah, it's uh, it's a very thin application in places, um, so this might over time peel off. You can already see it started to come off on the edges there, um, so that might be a point of concern. But yeah, very stiff. Not a lot of tor torsional um, flex to this. That's good, nothing wrong there. Then the actual uh, inner workings, uh, very simple. Uh, this, this device isn't um, controlled as such by a um, lot of electronic trickeries. It's a very analog device. There you go, there's the little cover that I mentioned where you can now see the the numbers, the on and off switch if you like. The plastic cover is just completely smeared with the coating of dust. Again having a look at the other side, uh, oh, I, did, I did the same again. It's again it's a PP uh, with the 30% glass fiber reinforcement. There you are, and then you can see again the ISC markings showing that this is a uh, an Einhell owned um, tool. The only criticism I've got here is the pegs that hold the, the black tunnel on that um, 
goes onto your vacuum cleaner tube hose. Um, they fit together quite nicely, um, so it's a good quality mold, clamshell, nothing wrong with that. Nice and snug, I mean there's a little gap there, but um, other than that, it's nice flush joints everywhere. Nothing to criticise, a little bit of a sharp edge there, but yeah, all in all, this is um, a good quality piece. Um, having a look at the internals, very simple. A battery terminal. This is an eccentric sander, so basically it uses this lump of steel that you can see on the cooling fan here as a counterbalance and you can feel it when you spin it. There is an inherent unbalance in it because obviously it's, as you can see from this angle, um, this is off center to one side to the shaft of the motor. Mass here is to offset that weight difference when it turns so it doesn't spin itself to bits basically um, and because of that obviously there are quite a lot of vibrations so you can see here that the zinc uh, sorry the nickel coated spades where the battery clips onto are actually worn through in points where the copper um, which is the base material is actually visible um, so over lifetime you can expect some contact issues there when you use the batteries which yeah you can see that they've uh, worn in nicely onto these spades all four of them you can see there this this uh, the the copper comes through on that side there and then when I flip the whole thing around there and down the bottom there as well so yeah that's a, a point of concern but yeah you can see the ISC logo there 30% uh, glass fiber reinforced PA6 positive and neutral I just soldered onto the spades. Not heat shrunk. Uh, battery terminal, which goes, um, the positive goes through your um, on off switch. So this basically controls the current. And then the positive goes into the little control board here, which is covered in dust. So let's see if we can just clean that up. Yeah, a little control board, which basically allows for the, um, the potent, potent, pot I'll put the word down below. Um, but yeah, this basically um, is like a, a moving resistance. So as you turn it to the one, the resistance is higher, so the current has more difficulty flowing through, which means the motor runs a lower RPM, as in it slows right down. And then when you turn it all the way to maximum, the resistance gets lower and therefore more flow gets through this little switch and into the motor, which means the motor spins faster. So basically this is the full on autobahn setting. And this is the, I don't know, the city center of LA during rush hour. You know what I mean? Complete congestion, gridlock, the lot. Positive neutral going onto the brushed motor. A uh, little capacitor there, a um, little microcontroller there so when you turn it to full max it basically bypasses the whole switch you can see this little lever there if i get that into focus so when you turn this around um, from any setting that you want fully variable from one let's say all the way up and then you approach six you can see the the mechanical lever there you can see that one clicking into place has the little white cam that you can just see there on the edge of the board so it drops out the way so basically this bypasses the whole switch and gives the current the chance to go directly from here all the way through to the positive of the motor so it basically bypasses the switch and goes directly full current to the motor um, stopping the switch from having to deal with um, all the amperage and all the current going through it uh, very simple but effective Foolproof, really can't go wrong. Then the um, electric moat. I'll put the type, uh, the details as they are imprinted on the motor. And then, if we have a look inside, using some additional lighting, you can see one of the brushes just there. Moving part of the motor there. You can see the coils and everything nicely epoxied in. A nice big bollop of epoxy there. 
the brushes unfortunately are a non-service part they're all encapsulated into this device so once they're worn out the motor is worn out so there won't be a lot of servicing in that regard nicely labeled up switch let's see if we can get that into focus i'll put the details down um, down below the video this one uh, hasn't got tooth markings on it as such, which is um, a little bit odd. All the other Einhell products, the switches of them, you know, like the one we've seen in this one, for instance, the switch actually has the tooth markings on the body of it. Right, so let's see if we can get the eccentric assembly apart. There we go. That comes apart pretty easily, which is good. Yeah, a little spring washer, and then it's also got a little bit of nylock on the thread lock on the actual screw there to keep it in place, because obviously it vibrates. And then this nicely um, machined on this surface. This is a die cast aluminium um, ring, machined. And then the inner surface where the bearing sits in, because this is pressed in there. That's nice and solid. No noises, fully sealed bearing. A 5002 2RS bearing, which stands for the, um, the encased bearing type. Good. Then a little uh, washer to basically um, stop the two metals from seating together too well. And then this is the fan with the weight to off to basically to allow for the off centric. Um, movement there you can see here the shaft here goes straight through the middle but then comes out off centric on the other end so that basically allows for that off centric movement again a bit of die cast um, it's got a zinc alloy uh, which is the ZN not, not finished or so so this is just um, casted and then um, the only thing that's machined is the actual shaft in there because they can't possibly cast it that nicely so they they machine the inside there um, after they cast it let's have a look inside yeah sort of okay a little bit rough on the machining there but i guess for 55 pounds worth of tool you probably can't complain of that too much then the actual motor assembly, another nice little bearing on it here, which this is the bearing that holds the motor put inside the housing. Um, again, nice and solid, no play in there. A little bit of noise, but I guess because she got a bit warm at one point, but other than that, uh, a shaft, which I don't think is a hardened steel shaft. No, this is just a normal metal shaft not hardened which is what holds the fan assembly on and then the plate that gets put on which basically holds again holds the motor into into place so the plate goes into there and then the bearing sits in this housing here to allow for the um, the whole unit and you can see the motor sits nice and flush in the housing held in nicely so the whole thing can't uh, bend on you twist on you during torsional inputs um, so this thing is, is solid um, the solid mounting of the motor inside the housing will give you that vibration so when you use it it's that vibration of the motor that you can feel in your hands because of the way that they mounted it it's not in like a rubber suspended system which you might find in some of the more premium tools um, to, to stop fatigue of the hand joint wrist joint but it's it's a, it's a diy focused tool uh, not so much for the professional who use this thing eight ten hours a day um, so yeah that's sort of where they then have the difference but you'll notice it in the price as well let's summarize it so the housing um, slight difference to some of the other tools that we know from INELS. So this is made out of a PP instead of a uh, PA or PA6 um, material. So the red plastic that you can see is a PP. Uh, it's still very stiff, good quality clams or housing, whichever one you want to call it. Um, the internals 
a good quality, an off-the-shelf motor unit, nothing wrong there, an 18 volt DC motor, um, standard sort of power tool grade electric motor, um, the switch gear and battery terminals and stuff are uh, okay quality, I said we are, after six months of use we already have quite some wear on the terminals which might cause you to um, have intermitting contact with the batteries so that might be a point of concern um, but then again you can buy this component swap it out and off you go again for a few euros or pounds wherever you buy this um, the only criticism I can give it here really is they should have heat shrunk the connector points to keep the dust out. I mean, they've done it on the motor, but they haven't done it anywhere else. And you can see it's all nicely coated in a covering of dust because this is a sander. And obviously as a result of sanding something, you generate a lot of dust. So this device, uh, unlike some of the others, gets exposed quite heavily to a coating of dust. So yeah. The aluminium parts are good quality, solid pieces, nicely machined afterwards. I mean, this is just all uh, dirt build up, but yeah, you can see the machining marks, nicely done. Nothing wrong there. Good quality bearings used, nicely encaged. Um, yeah, that's it really. Before I say goodbye and thank you, um, I just wanted to um, ask for some feedback. Um, some of you already do, which is much appreciated. Thank you very much for that. We're trying to obviously make good content and better content as we grow this channel and these reviews. So I'm just wondering, um, would you guys prefer shorter videos, longer videos? Because some of them can be quite lengthy, but I do want to go into each of the components and show you what, what they are and give a, a, an honest opinion about things. Um, so that you can make an educated purchase when you're considering buying these or if you use these videos for servicing or maintenance of your own tools uh, Great as well too. Um, so yeah, do let me know if they should be shorter if they should be longer If there's things that you want to see that I should add or leave out of the videos Then uh, by all means do let me know down below in the comments um, Give it a thumbs up obviously if you like the video uh, Consider subscribing uh, There if you want to see more of this content and then before the battery cuts out thank you very much for watching goodbye stay safe and we'll see you in the next video